Welcome to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us as we study the Word of God together. Go get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Heavenly Father, we come right now, God. We just thank you. We pray you. God, we ask you for peace. We ask you for understanding. We ask you to be able to see your, what you want us to see in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So last week, um, we had a good time in, in Jesus. Yes, we did. Um, in chapters 13 and 14. And we talked about... Uh, David and uh, son Absalom, that's when he started his his reign of, well, it really didn't start with Absalom. It really started with uh, Amnon and Tam, um, Amnon's reign, uh, rape of his sister. And we found out <laughs> that this is all because um, Jonab started it all. Jonab's their cousin, started it all planted the seed, and then he coming out looking like he ain't even do nothing, white as snow. So now we're in chapter 15, and we're talking about Absalom conspiracy. When we left off, um, David had gave him the kiss of I forgive you, gave him grace. And so, in a, and you would think that after your um, the prodigal son, so to speak, comes home, I ain't think about it to this moment, he would be considered a prodigal son coming home, and all is well, and I'm going to live happily ever after. I'm going to take care of my sister Tamar and my daughter named Tamar, and I'm going to do what I need to do. <clears throat> well, Absalom says no. Absalom says, I am going to, I want to be king. So here starts the conspiracy. We're in Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. After this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. And when any man had a dispute to come before the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, From what city are you? And when he said, Your servant is of such and such a tribe in Israel, Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right. But there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Then Absalom would say, Oh, that I were judge in the land, then every man with a dispute or cause might come to me, and I would give him justice. And whenever a man came near to pay homage to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Thus Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. Okay, so Absalom planned to be king. Your first plan is to hmm, let me get some chariots and some horses so I can put, do my position, and let me get some people to go ahead of me. I'm gonna provide justice. I'm gonna give advice. I'm gonna prevent them from talking to David. And um, he does this all under David's nose, right? Mm -hmm. Keep on. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And at the end of four years, Absalom said to the king. So let's stop. So some Bibles say uh, that it was um, 40 years. That, um, But most scholars believe that that is incorrect. That is actually four years. Um, it says that um, the four-year period began either when Absalom returned from Geshur or with his recirculation, sorry, reconciliation with David, the alternate meaning 40 um, could be referred to neither the age of either the age of Absalom since he was born at Hebron after David had begun to rule or nor the time of David reign since he was only four years old total. So they believe it's four years. Okay? They deduce they the Hebrew said 40 years, but they believe it was the scribe's error. Go ahead. At the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed to the Lord in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I lived at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will offer worship to the Lord. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. 
But Absalom sent secret messengers throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then say, Absalom is king at Hebron. With Absalom went 200 men from Jerusalem who were invited guests, and they went in their innocence and knew nothing. So he gets his father to let him go to Hebron because he couldn't have done this in Jerusalem. They would have found out, right? Mm -hmm. So he 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 does subterfuge. It's like I got I made this promise to my grandfather in the king of Geshur, and I need to to keep this promise. And then he he starts the the plotting of any great uprising. You have little secret people talking about stuff, mm -hmm. and then he has two um, innocent officials come in. Now they don't know that they finna come to Hebron so that um, Absalom can keep them there because, you know, it was entrenched. That used to be where um, David had his first kingdom. And so it's entrenched, so they couldn't get out if they wanted to. And so he, he, his plot is thickening. Now let's see how big his plot is going. Go ahead. Oh, my goodness. And while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel, the Gilanite, David's counselor, from his city, Gilo. And the conspiracy grew strong, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. Now, he had to know that Asibaphel had some type of grudge against David for him to call, because First Chronicles 27 and 33 says that, that, um, that this is um, he's one of David's trusted advisors. But remember, we found out last week that Asibaphel is Bathsheba's grandfather. And so, therefore, he still is, it, it is presumed that he's still upset about David, number one, killing his um, his son-in-law, mm -hmm. but number two, um, really disgracing his granddaughter. And so, it was probably easy for Absalom to send for him to plot against David. Okay. All right, let's go to 13. And the messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel have gone after Absalom. Then David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, arise and let us flee or else there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Go quickly, lest he overtake us quickly and bring down ruin on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. So let me ask you a question. This is David's reaction. Um, if you were if you were in class last week, you know that we had some concerns about David's reaction to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. David's reaction to Ammonah raping his daughter. David' uh, reaction to Absalom. He's grieving for Absalom, even though Absalom kills Ammonah. His reaction to all of this. His reaction is is basically no action at all in mm -hmm. all these incidents. But in this instance, he flees. Does this sound like David? The one who wrestled with animals and struck down giants to flee from his son. No. This is a different David. This is not the David that we have been told stories about. This is a different David. Yeah. Sounds like he's broken. Yeah. yeah. Can, totally broken. Totally like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go. With, I'm finna flee. You finna flee? You killed giants, sir. Right. And to run from his own son. You killed massive people. And you and you running from Absalom, pretty boy. But you know what? I think you know. Think about this: when when he, when when the prophet made that prophecy against him, that the sword would never leave his house. That's probably playing in his head. And absolutely, so and that's the point I wanted to bring yeah. out that he remembered what Nathan said to him. He knew that this was going to happen. So in his mind, he was right preparing himself for this, and so he's he knows. Because he's he's a, a man of God's own heart, that God is going to figure something out to save him, even though the sword is going to be against his house, right? Yeah, he's going to accept his chest. Fire. Correct, because so far he's had two kids die mm -hmm. since yeah. all of this, all of since his sin happened. Mm -hmm. And a daughter raped. And a daughter raped, and so we're gonna find out some. We gonna we gonna find some. Uh, we we won't find out until uh, chapter um, next to next week what happens to Absalom. But this has to be hard on him. So right now, he's saying, let's get up and flee. 
And if you were one of his scribes, you'd be like, not scribes, his servants. You'd be like, what's up with you? Why are you not fighting? You got, you the king. You got all these people. But the key word is he heard that he got the hearts of Israel. So he don't know who going to be friend or who going to be foe. Because I know he knows uh, Asitophel, his trusted advisors with him. So now he, he don't know what to do. So let's see what happens. And then on top of that, Go ahead. I'm he sorry. would have to fight his own son, and he was not going to do that. He was not prepared to do that. To fight and kill his son. But see, no. I mean, but I mean, he, okay, like, okay, so let's think about it. I know that that's right. You correct. But so, Absalom, he got like 35 of the sons. <laughs> like, I'm not being funny. Like, I'm yeah. for real. He got all these other kids. Why do you care about Absalom so much? Well, you remember but, Absalom was the, was, was the second heir, wasn't he? Uh-huh, he was after Ammonai. Yeah. So, I'm like, okay, so then you got other people in line. Right? In mm -hmm. my mind, you know, like I couldn't kill my kid either. But that was what we talked about last week, right? He had to decide whether he was going to kill Absalom. Absalom should have been dead a long time ago because he killed his brother. But Ammonai should have been dead as well because he raped his sister. So he just decided, I'm not going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to do what Eli did. Is it Eli? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. To I'm going to let them just do what they want to do. Mm hmm. And you think he would have learned from that because he did know that history. Yeah, he did know that. Absalom. He just don't let them just do what they want to do. They just doing whatever. So Absalom gets to do whatever he want to do. So let's see what else Absalom is going to do. And the king's servant said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king decides. So the king went out and all his household after him. And the king left ten concubines to keep the house. And the king went out and all the people <coughs> after him. And they halted at the last house. And all his servants passed by him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the 600 Gittites who had followed him from Gath passed on before the king. Now you have to really understand the um, significance of this. These are foreigners that are with him. These are not, these are Philistines that are following him. These are not Israelites. These are Philistines that are going with him. Of course they got a beef with David. Huh? Of course they got a beef. Yeah, oh, they got a beef with David. David yeah. But they went with him. Yeah. That's funny. And all and, and it's in, in the commentary said it's the custom that mostly foreigners were their bodyguards. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't really trust your own people because they be trying to use trying to kill you for the throne. Wow. As, as we see. As we see. As we Go ahead. Then the king said to Ittai, the Gittite, Why do you also go with us? Go back and stay with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your home. You came only yesterday, and shall I today make you wander about with us since I go, I know not where? Go back and take your brothers with you, and may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. But Ittai answered the king, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, wherever my lord the king shall be, whether for death or for life, there also will your servant be. Yeah, I see an echo. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. else said that? That sound like um It sound like Ruth. Think. Oh mm -hmm. Ruth told her yeah. she's a foreigner, and she told her Jewish uh, mother in law where I'm up swear by your God, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's an echo to show that even though the Jews have the inheritance, it's the Gentile that believes in God more than they do. Wow. And I just got that from Jesus right then. <laughs> Who go ahead? I'm sorry. That just, that just blew me away. And David said to Ittai, go then, pass on. So Ittai the Gittite passed on with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. And all the land wept aloud as all the people passed by. And the king crossed the brook Kidron, and all the people passed on toward the wilderness. And Abiathar came up, and behold, Zadok came also with all the Levites, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God until the people had all passed out of the city. 
Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and let me see both it and his, and his dwelling place. So he learned something. David knew that the ark does not guarantee a victory. And, 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 and he remembered something Eli and them did right. I me mean, wrong. Remember, they took the ark to with them wherever they went. He said, no, the ark is supposed to be right there. We're going to leave the ark. If it's for me to come back, I'll be there. But it ain't. I'm not going to be trugging the ark like the ark is. <laughs> I'm laughing because I... Uh, my father used to take, he had this television and he used to drag it with him when he was leaving all the time. And so that's how they, to me, that's in my mind. That's how they was taking the ark, you know, take this big, it wasn't like the flat screen. Right. But right. it was the big box. Big box. Yeah. And he would be, he, every time he got mad, he would try to, he would move that, the big old television. And, and that's how I see that. Okay. That's funny. The back of the box. Uh, that big box was big. Uh-huh. Go ahead. But if he says, I have no pleasure in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me what seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, are you not a seer? Go back to the city in peace with your two sons, Ahimaaz, your son, and Jonathan, the son of Abiathar. See, I will wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar carry the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remain there. And something right there that killed, uh, that, uh, ding, 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 in my head. David remembered that he wants to keep the priest safe and tells the priest to go yes, back because he's not going to be the reason why they die. Right. Not, again. not again. Not again. Yep. So he's like, nah, I, I learned this lesson. Y'all go back, protect the ark, do what y'all supposed to do. Absalom might need a seer and you need, and I need, you know, I need, basically he needed some spies to go and say, hey, let me know when the close is clear. Right. And he's, and when you just said that about like Absalom needs a seer, like Absalom still needed all the things in the city or whatnot. He if, still, but he's, he wants his son to have what he had. Yeah, he wants his son. In yeah. one way, he does want his son to be successful. Correct. So if God yeah. says that his son's supposed to be king, David is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If whatever God has for him, it is for him. And he's like, I'm the same humbleness he had even with Saul. Like, yeah. like he knew he was gonna be king, but he still was waiting. Yeah. He didn't like overthrow. He had yeah, but the time. last time he got the priest killed, and he said That's he true. he ain't, he wasn't gonna he do that again. Yet. Let me ask you some beats. I don't know, you know, pardon my uh, not paying attention. Has he been told yet, David, that Solomon was gonna be his replacement? Have we got? No, nope, we okay. haven't gotten there yet. Right, right. I, I don't. I think Solomon was just born when this all started. Because it was after. Because it, it was a couple years after that baby died, and yeah. then it said Solomon was born. Yeah. Okay. So Solomon is a like baby. Four years in between. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, Solomon like five years away. So Solomon was at the big party where everybody's going to look like they're going to be killed. Uh uh. He was a baby. Okay. These were his oldest sons. Yeah. Okay. You know, he had like, you know, kind, you know, yeah. you know how some people got the, the old kids and then they start all over again. Uh -huh. yeah. So. Yeah. Do, do I not know? Yeah. <laughs> My brother. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, I'm in verse 30. But David went up the ascent of the of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, barefoot and with his head covered. And all the people who were with him covered their heads, and they went up weeping as they went. And it was told David, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O oh Lord, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. While David was coming to the summit where God was worshipped, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat torn and dirt on his head. Which means that he was on uh, David's side. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. David said to him, if you go on with me, you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in, the, in time past. So now I will be your servant. Then you will defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. Are not Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? So whatever you hear from the king's house, tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, their two sons are with them there. Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And you know he was indebted to Abiathar because Abiathar's father was the one who got killed. Right. Go ahead. 
and and by them you shall send to me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city just as Absalom was entering Jerusalem. So what it perceives as being in action, David still is smart. He mm -hmm. said, I need some people to be inside listening. Yeah. Because Absalom is still young. He's still a fool. He's going to listen to a ship with that, and I need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the commissary, he told his shy to go there to frustrate um, a, uh, Apothel, whatever, you know. Yeah. Oh, Hippothel. Hippothel. Okay. I, can mean, I said the wrong name before, but y'all know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He he sent him there to frustrate him because there's, now there's two um, counselors, okay. two head counselors because – um, his shot is also mentioned in First Chronicles 27 and 33. So he's one of the big dogs. Okay. So now David got his spies up there. And of course, you know, we'll see what happens next. When David had passed a little beyond the summit, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of donkey saddles bearing 200 loaves of bread a hundred bunches of raisin, a hundred of summer fruits, a skin of wine, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, why have you brought these? Ziba answered, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on. The bread and summer fruit are for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who faint in the wilderness to drink. And the king said, and where is your master's son? Ziba said to the king, behold, he remains in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will give me back the kingdom of my father. Then the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belonged to Mephibosheth is now yours. And Ziba said, I pay homage. Let me ever find favor in your sight, my lord the king. Now, for David was really, see, David get on my nerves with this one. <laughs> Because he always got people coming to tell him yeah. stuff, and he be, and sometimes he'll believe it, and sometimes he don't believe. No, most of the time he believe it. Mm -hmm. Like, what would make you think that that um, Jonathan's son would do that? Right. right. He 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 lame. He lame yeah. Number one and number two, he lay prostrate in front of you and said, "I'm just a dog. I'm gonna be with you forever." Now, how you how you honoring Jonathan's memory? By taking this fool, because you know he already mad because you took all his stuff before. Mm -hmm. And basically leaving, leaving him, because cause for real, what is happening is, is this fight for the kingdom. We mm -hmm. got Absalom, we got David. Now he think um, Jonathan's son, I ain't going to butcher his name no more, um, um, wants it. But then we got somebody else who come on the scene. Let's read. Oh, let me ask you. Hey, hey, you know, y'all notice something? David ain't talking to God at all right now. No, he ain't talking to God. He ain't asking God no questions. No, nah, he he said whatever God gonna do, he gonna do. He but he it. he just let he just let things happen because if he had asked God, he would have known that this fool was mine. Right. Yeah. But, and and hold up, all his advisors that have direct correlation with God are not with him. <laughs> they right. are with That's him Right. Oh. And, and, and you know it's, it's like it's like Nancy said. He instead of him being a pitcher like he normally is, mm -hmm. he's catching. Yeah, it's like, he just back. Right. Okay, I'm just gonna catch it. Okay, yeah. okay. Where you would think he still has to take direction, even though he's gonna he, get the natural consequences of his actions. Yeah, leader still got to make a decision. And he yeah. ain't making no decision. He just fleeing. Mm -hmm. He's become. He's the cowardly lion right now. Amen. Go ahead. Verse five. When King David came to Bahurim. There came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. And as he came, he cursed continually. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And Shimei said as he cursed, get out, get out, you man of blood, you worthless man. The Lord has avenged on you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son, Absalom. See, your evil is on you, for you are a man of blood. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? No. Ain't no lie, none of you say it. No. Except about Saul. But... 
He told the truth about that. He told the truth about everything else. Mm -hmm. He is a man of blood. And that's exactly what Nathan told David. So now David like, let's see what David's saying. Then Abishai, the son of Zerua, said to the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. <laughs> <laughs> but the king said, what have, I, what, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zerua? If he is cursing because the Lord has said to him, curse David, who then shall say, why have you done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, behold, my own son seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite leave him alone and let him curse for the Lord has told him to. Okay, so mm. let's think about it. First of all, it's a cursed, it's a crime to curse a king. Let's go to Ecclesiastics 10. Verse 20, and it says, even in your thoughts, do not curse the king, nor in your board bedroom curse the rich, for a bird of the air will carry your voice, or some winged creature tell the matter. Mm. Let's go to Exodus 22. and I believe 28 yes you shall not revile God nor curse a ruler of your people so that was one of the laws about social justice the ju I mean not the ju but one of the rules was that you're not supposed to curse the ruler of your people um side note Shimmy, the one who um, cursed him, Shimmy, Shimmy me, mm -hmm. is an ancestor of Mordecai, who mm -hmm. is the counselor and educator of Esther right. in, um, um, in, in um, the book of Esther, okay? Who was the queen, right? Right. Okay. Himnan, who was the, you know, the nemesis of Mordecai, right, mm -hmm. is the descendant of Agai. The person that Saul was supposed to kill. Mm. So it this problem continued all the way to Esther. So had David killed Shimni, then would Mordecai be here? Mm -hmm. And so a uh, God's providence mm. saved mm -hmm. Shimni yeah. in order for Mordecai to help say have help Esther save the Jewish nation. But the Jewish nation wouldn't have been under the attack had Saul did what God told him to do. So because he used the disobedience to get his purpose. Yes. To serve uh -huh. his purpose. And Ham, remember, Ham, Haman was the adversary. He was His people were supposed to be killed by Saul. Mm -hmm. And that's why Saul lost his kingdom. So it's a whole circle. Um, which I found amazing. And Okay. So he gave him grace. Because David's like, God gave me grace. I should be dead. I'm not going to kill somebody else when I should be dead. And he made a point. Why am I going to be afraid of him? Mm -hmm. My son trying to come and get me. I ain't got time to worry about him. And all he was doing was hollering from across the yeah. wall. And throwing, and throwing rocks. Yeah, it was rocks. Okay. Hold up. I, I killed somebody with a rock. So right. <laughs> what's that? Like, right. you, you, you have nothing. Yeah. Save your energy. Leave him alone. And then the qualified, he said, the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord told him to curse me. Yeah. The Lord told him, because that's a reminder of what Nathan told him. Right. Nathan told him that he was a, um, uh, Nathan told him that he was a man of blood. And that mm -hmm. was the reason. That's And that's going to be one of the reasons why he can't build God's temple. Right. It's kind of a mirror to Moses, because Moses couldn't go to the promised land because of his disobedience. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. It may be that the Lord will look on the wrong done to me and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing today. So David and his men went on the road while Shimei went along on the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and flung dust. And the king and all the people who were with him <coughs> arrived weary at the Jordan. And there he refreshed himself. 
Now Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Ahithophel mm -hmm. with him. And when Hushai, the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, No, for whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I, his I will be, and with him I will remain. And again, whom should I serve? Should it not be his son? As I have served your father, so I will serve you. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your counsel. What shall we do? Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you have made yourself a stench to your father, and the hands of all who are with you will be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Let's stop. So Absalom having sex with the concubine was foretold. Right. In Second Samuel 12, 1 through 12, remember? Uh -huh. But also, this is a custom that if you have sex with the concubines, then you took the throne. Mm -hmm. So this was a custom anyway. That's mm -hmm. you basically saying You got his women. You got I got everything that belongs to you. And now you you, you he ain't gonna never be able to do nothing with these concubines because now they, they tainted. They tainted, right. So mm -hmm. then you might I got I got this. And so in my mind <laughs> but she was grandfather would did it on purpose. But it's also what God said was gonna happen. Yep. And it's so apropos that it's done on a rooftop. Right. Because that's yeah. when David's sin started because he saw Bathsheba. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's where his love started. Uh-huh. Yeah. On that rooftop. Yeah. So everybody's gonna see because that's exactly what the Nathan told him. Everybody's going to see. Everybody's gonna see it. What's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna see your sin. So that's what happened. Go ahead and say, and go ahead. Now in those days, the counsel that Ahithophel gave was as if one consulted the word of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel esteemed, both by David and by Absalom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says as if he consulted God. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. But he didn't. He didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was something that he did on his own accord because he was getting back at David. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what the commentary says. Okay. Right, because if he consulted God, he knows that he wasn't supposed to be the king anyway. No, no. But the killer part is he supposed that was supposed to happen anyway. Oh, okay. Because if you go back to Second Samuel twelve, yeah. God's gonna make sure his God's word is yeah. never going to be void. No. And Nathan was yeah. a seer. Yeah. How it happened, no, you know and it yeah. says <laughs> but it happened. Right. Really, he didn't need to tell that but, for it to happen. Yeah. You know, he didn't really need right. to consult God. It was going to happen anyway. But he, God used him as an instrument of deception to do it. Because you know? that's what he said he was going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God is. used his evil heart to make it come true. Right. It says, yeah. Behold, I will raise up an evil against you out of your own house. See, check. Mm -hmm. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. Check. check. And he will lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Check. check for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before Israel Ooh. and before the sun. Wow, check. but it's so fun that God will use David's enemy to um, destroy him, but then he's gonna punish the enemy for coming against David. Well, this is the thing, they weren't enemies, right? See, and that's the thing, it'd be God can use your own people, your own family to get you, right. He don't have to use an outside person. Mm -hmm. And so it's... Oh, okay, okay, Lord. It's, it'll be the only person in your own household to point out your faults and get you. And make you, you know, see, okay, I messed up. So, mm, I can't say in Jesus, but amen. I'm, I'm saying that in jest, but I just got a message. But anyway, let's go to chapter 17. <laughs> Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom... Let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. So we're going to do an, a comparison. 
a, a, a Pipothel says, let's go get him right now because he's weak. Makes sense. His shy says something different that don't really make sense. <laughs> but we'll see who Absalom takes counsel from. Go ahead. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged and throw him into a panic and all the people who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he has to say. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom said to him, thus has Ahithophel spoken. Shall we do as he says? So now mind you this, listen to this. The verse of said, everybody said whatever, a said, God said, so why would he ask his shite? You get what I'm saying? Oh. Well, he wanted confirmation, but he in remember we just said now in those days the counsel of a people gave was is one if one and consulted if the word of God. Mm, yeah. So was all the counsel of if it was out of steam, both by David and Absalom. Mm -hmm. So we just read that, right? Yeah. A sympathel just gave him another thing to do. But he, instead of just going ahead and doing it, he asked for a second opinion. A second opinion okay. Which contradicts what just happened before, but it's not really contradicting. It's God. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Verse 5. Then Absalom said, call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he has to say. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom said to him, thus has Ahimophel spoken. Shall we do as he says? If not, you speak. Then Hushai said to Absalom, This time the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good. Hushai said, You know that your father and his men are mighty men, and that they are enraged, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. Besides, your father is expert in war. He will not spend the night with the people. Behold, even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits or in some other place. And as soon as some of the people fall at the first attack, whoever hears it will say, there has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Then even the valiant man whose heart is like the heart of a lion will utterly melt with fear. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man and that those who are with him are valiant men. But my counsel is that all Israel be gathered to you from Dan to Beersheba and as the sand by the sea for multitude and that you go to battle in person. So we shall come upon him in some place where he is to be found, and we shall light upon him as the dew falls on the ground, and of him and all the men with him, not one will be left. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city, and we shall drag it into the valley until not even a pebble is to be found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord has ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel so that the Lord might bring harm upon Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, Thus and so did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and so have I counseled. Now, therefore, sing quickly and tell David, do not stay tonight at the fords of the wilderness, but by all means pass over, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now, Jonathan and Ahimaaz were waiting at Enrobo. A female servant was to go and tell them, and they were to go and tell King David, for they were not to be seen entering the city. But a young man saw them and told Absalom, so both of them went away quickly and came to the house of a man at Bahurim who had a well in his courtyard and they went down into it. And the woman took and spread a, co a covering over the well's mouth and scattered grain on it and nothing was known of it. When Absalom's servant came to the woman at the house, they said, where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said to them, 
They have gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. Let's stop. They hid in a well. What is this similar to? About them hiding in a well? No, oh. hiding period. Back, um, when David hid. Um, oh. No, there was Rahab. Uh, yes. When they, uh, Joshua. When they Joshua too. Rahab yeah. hiding them. Right. Oh, and the, and the. Because they were looking for them. Yeah, the spies. The spies. 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 Correct. Yeah. It's similar to that. Not the same, mm -hmm. but it's similar. Mm -hmm. Very. Go on, Peter. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> After they had gone, the men came up out of the well and went and told King David. They said to David, Arise and go quickly over the water, for thus and so has Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people who were with him, and they crossed the Jordan. By daybreak, not one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. When Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and went off home to his own city. He set his house in order and hanged himself, and he died and was buried in the tomb of his father. Now, you know he wasn't supposed to be um, buried with the tomb of his father because he committed suicide, mm. and that's a sin. But he was. Now, he, he couldn't take that. His counsel wasn't taken. Wow. And he went off to kill himself. That's crazy. Wow. He couldn't take he it. He couldn't take that. Um. Yeah, they did pray for that. Yeah, he said that he'd be foolish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read uh, 24. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed the Jordan with all the men of Israel. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, it's a town in Galilee to the east of the Jordan River. Uh, a Shishbosheth established himself there and reigned for two not. Ishbosheth uh, established himself there and reigned for two years in the city. This city was where Jacob saw the angels while on his way to Peniel. Mm -hmm. It was appointed to be a Levitical city from the territory of Gaz and Josh. I mean Joshua. His letter became the haven for David while fleeing from Absalom because likely um, it was well fortified. So um, go ahead. Um, Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Now Absalom has set Amasa over the army instead of Joab. So go ahead. Keep on. Amasa was the son of a man named Ithra, the Ishmaelite, who had married Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeruah, Joab's mother. Okay. So <laughs> um, Abigail is now David's wife. Absalom appointed Amisha, the commander of the army of Israel, I'm reading the note, replacing Joab, who accompanied David on the flight from Jerusalem. So Joab is with um, David. Amisha was the son of Abigail, either David's sister or his half sister. That's 1 Chronicles 2 and 17, making David's nephew. His mother was also the sister of Zeruel the mother of Joab. Therefore, Amasa was the cu cousin of Absalom, Joab, and Abishai. Under his leads, the armies crossed the Jordan into Galilee. This is twisted. And the high e um, eastern area. Sufficient time been passed. So basically, so this is crazy. You saying Amasa is the son of Abigail, which, okay, so you know Joab is not David's son. Right. That's the stepson. Joab. The commander of the army okay. is his stepson. So they're saying that his other stepson slash nephew <laughs> is in head of the army. Let's just say they do a lot of the stuff that the English do. Okay? They in the breeding. Okay? Um, but either way, they... Um, they're using they, he used somebody else to head the army because of course Joab went with David alright verse 26 and Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead when David came to Mahanaim Shobi the son of Nahash from Rabah of the Ammonites and Machir the son of Amiel from Lodeber and Barzillai the Gileadite 
from Raglam brought beds, basins, and earthen vessels, wheat, barley, flour, parched grains, beans, and lentils, honey, and curds, and sheep and cheese from the herd for David and the people with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Now, Machir, M-A-C-H-I-R, he, they are saying that he might be Bathsheba's brother. Mm. So he's related to her. And Brazilla, he's a he's 80 years old at this time. So he doesn't go with David when David leaves. But he's wealthy and he's a benefactor. And they talk about him more um, in chapter 19. But if you go to 1 Kings 2 and 7... We'll find out a little bit more about him. And David granted him kindness. So David tells him, says, but telling Solomon, but deal loyally with the sons of Brazil of the Gilead and let them be among those who eat at your table. For, for with such loyalty, they met me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And there also, let's listen to this. I ain't even wasn't trying to go there, but I want to go ahead and keep on reading. And there also with Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjamite from Barum, who cursed me with grievous curse on that day when I went to Miram. But when he came down to meet me at Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword, nor therefore do not hold him, hold him guiltless. For you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do to him. And you shall bring you shall bring his gray head down with the blood of Sheryl. So he does eventually get his just desserts, but he gets to um, procreate before it happens. Okay. Um, so uh, now they are eating. They get they are together, and when we uh. Um, when we come back, we'll be in chapter 18, and we talk about Absalom getting killed, and um, we 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 see a, we we still gonna see David's house uh, coming after him. Okay, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come right now, God. God, we thank you for the nuggets, for the the lessons that you revealed to us today. We thank you for being able to learn your word, to seek your word, and to keep your word. God bless our households. Keep us from COVID. Keep us um, from any hurt, harm, and danger. Watch over those who are grieving, God, and keep them in perfect peace. Keep us safe. And we just thank you for being able to congregate today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.